Hey everyone. I wanted to answer a question that I got recently, but I've also gotten it uh, over time. And uh, I've probably addressed this in some of the other videos uh, regarding Hydros Plus, but I thought I would make a dedicated video um, so I can point people to it if they have the question. Now the question is, these quarter inch couplers, if you look online, you might see flow ratings probably as low as three gallons a minute and as high as, I may have seen eight. I don't know for sure because I don't really pay attention to those. Um, but the question is, well, if this says it's, let's just say six gallons a minute, it's rated for six gallons a minute. Will it handle the nine gallons a minute, 10 gallons a minute we have with the stage three, one series or the 12 gallons a minute that we have with the stage two, two R3 E solution. And, and even more than that in the future. And the short answer is yes. And I'm going to show you that and talk about the implications of that real uh, shortly. Uh, as you can see, we're not working on a tractor today. This is a, uh, my skid steer. It's a T770. It's high flow, which we won't even need to get to that. Um, this machine has 24 gallons a minute at wide open throttle at standard flow and something close to 40 gallons a minute, I think it's 35 actually, 38 maybe, uh, in the high flow setting. But we're not even going to get close to that because the, the flow meter I'm using today it goes up to 15 gallons a minute. That's currently beyond anything that we have with Hydros Plus. I said currently. So this, this will solve what we need to solve when it comes to the question at hand which is these quarter inch couplers, can they handle uh, more than the three or six or whatever gallons per minute you see? So let me show you that uh, to get that out of the way and we'll talk a little bit about, um, again, the implications of that and what it means. So let me start this up. And disable all the appropriate safety mechanisms. All right. So we got auxiliaries on. And I'm just going to push this button here. And at idle, this machine is pushing about 11 gallons a minute. And as you can tell, nothing's jerking around. Everything's working good. No leaks. Well, if there were leaks, it would be because. I forgot to tighten something. We can just add a little bit of RPM here. So as you can see, very handily. We can handle 15 gallons a minute. There's two of these uh, quarter inch quick couplers. So not only does it have to come out and go through one, go through the, the hydraulic flow meter and out the other, uh, you know, it's passing two of those, but they said, you know, they're only good for six gallons a minute. Well, what they really mean is at six gallons a minute, there's no pressure drop or there's a very minimal pressure drop. Now pressure drop, all it really means is that the fluid is being compressed like it's going through an orifice but it's not doing any work so think about going over the pressure relief valve going through you know any kind of restrictor valve and, and even as little as going through um, an elbow there is some amount of pressure drop when that happens but it's minuscule compared to what we care about so We've got 15 gallons a minute. We're flowing through here. The, you know, I don't know what the residual pressure was in this system. And you can bet that as you get up to 15 or 20 or whatever, rather than the flow only, and it depends on what you're actually doing, but let's just say this was a power beyond loop, right? When you have your tractor running or your machine running and you are within the, um, and it's an open center system, when, whenever you're within kind of the, the flow rates that everything in the system is rated for, your pressure is probably going to be 20, 50, maybe even 100 PSI, uh, and, and that's all you have. Now, keep in mind, most in most cases, we're talking about these being 
connecting to work devices, so they're not constantly running uh, like the Power Beyond, at least these quarter inch ones are not. But if we were to put the quarter inch ones in a Power Beyond loop and we had 15 gallons per minute, we would have some level of pressure drop as it goes through the loop. And instead of 100 PSI, maybe we have 250, or maybe we have as high as 500. What does that mean? Well, it means that, one, you are creating some pressure, but you're also creating a little more heat. Is that a problem? Well, no, as long as you can dissipate that heat appropriately. I mean... If you look at this machine, this T770, whenever it's running high flow, wide open, you know, 40 gallons per minute, there are a lot of hoses on this. And a lot of times, you know, the implements only have half inch hoses anyhow, but a lot of those hoses don't solve for 40 gallons a minute. Here's an example right here. This is a half inch tube. A half inch tube, if you want to look at the academic side of it, this is only rated for 16 gallons a minute, something in that range. Well, this, this machine at wide open throttle can throw 24 gallons a minute. So we've got, you know, what, 40% more flow that can actually go through this than what it's rated for. What does that mean? As it moves through here, it's probably gonna create a little bit of heat. But if you've ever been around a skid steer, you know that is the main uh, thing that they do on the rear end of this thing is is get rid of heat lots of fans lots of uh, cooling apparatuses so that you can get rid of the heat but ultimately we keep I don't want to go too deep in it but you got to keep laminar flow and as you keep laminar flow and it's not chaotic flow work actually can get done if we were to, if we were to go so fast and you could do that with these I don't know where it would be, but it's probably somewhere in the, you know, 30 gallon a minute, 20, 30 gallon a minute. You would start to get, rather than the flow flowing, you know, uh, in layers, essentially, they would, it would be more chaotic. And as that happens, you start to get aeration and other heat creating properties that, you know, ultimately you will not be able to dissipate, uh, even with a machine like this that has a whole lot of uh, mechanisms to do that. So... That's the answer to the question. Can this handle nine, 10, 12 gallons per minute? Certainly. The four series uses this on the front third function. If you, do, if you use your grapple or if you use an auger, you're gonna move 11 gallons a minute with the four series uh, through that so that you can, you can run your auger. John Deere has no problem putting that on. Other brands, I'm not picking on John Deere, but other brands as well. And it's because what they know is you're not gonna use it in such a fashion that it's really gonna create enough heat that becomes a problem for the overall machine. Now, can you overheat the machine? Yeah, the, the easiest way typically is to use the hydrostatic and pull something that you can't pull or pull it in high range when you really should be in low range. That can overheat the, the fluid and you can't get rid of the heat fast enough so you have spongy uh, reaction times and you know you'll have to stop and let it cool off. Same thing here. If you were to run, if you had, let's say, 20 gallons a minute, and you ran it for an hour, you could potentially, that pressure drop could create enough residual heat soaking over time in the sump of the tractor so that your, your fluid gets too hot, you got to stop for a minute, you got to let it cool off, and then you can go back to your work. Now, I haven't done long-term tests. I have run... Um, bush hog like a bush hog that i've made four foot bush hog with a one series through actually the ag version of these couplers and i ran it for an hour and didn't have any issue and and i actually did that with the hydros plus cooler plus and and it turned out we didn't even get to like 150 or 160 degrees which is well below where you would want to be and all that means is that these while they were creating some extra heat we were get, getting rid of it faster than we were creating it. I wasn't, you know, doing any kind of ground engaging work. It was simply just the, the rotary uh, mower on the front. So that was really the only thing creating any significant heat, if it was. I, I honestly have not done the testing to see just how much heat is coming through when you're going, you know, nine, 10 gallons a minute. So 
long-winded answer to the question. I should probably make a short that just answers the question, but if you want more, the more detailed answer is in hydraulics, the rules uh, are there for your guidance, but they ultimately, I would say, don't matter as long as you manage heat and you maintain laminar flow. If you can do that, you can do anything with hydraulics. That's it for this one. Questions, comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching.